Hello, my name is Seth Mamfield, and I'm going to be playing some Is It Arclight, some, some Phoenix on MTG Arena. Um, so the deck is straight, straight blue red. It's been around, um, it's been around for a few months now. Recently, LSV made made top four of the Mythic Championship with it. The deck is still really solid. Sometimes players forget about it, um, but I I like it. It's got you've got your your phoenixes, so the recurring power of Arclight Phoenix. If you cast three spells in a turn, instants or sorceries, you can return this from your graveyard. There's a number of enabler spells that we have in the deck that allow you to do that. So we've got our cheap one mana spells, shock, removal, and then opt is a cantrip. There's a lot of cantrips in the deck because you really want to just be churning through your library in order to find your... Arclight Phoenixes, get them into the graveyard. You can get them into the graveyard with Chart, of course, with the jump start from Radical Idea and Tormenting Voice, and even the jump start from Beacon Bolt, and then also the Discovery Dispersal. So there's a ton of cantrips. There's a ton of ways to get those Phoenixes either from your hand into the graveyard or from your library into the graveyard. Electromancer, one of those key creatures that if you play it early in the game, and it survives, it's going to do a ton of work for you. Most of your super explosive hands do involve Goblin Electromancer. Um, Crackling Drake gets huge as the game progresses. So, And it also replaces itself by drawing a card. A um, couple sweet one-ofs in, in the list. One Ral. One Melody, one Beacon Bolt, and then simple, straightforward mana base. The Blood Crypt there is only to be able to basically dispersal. Um, sometimes that does come up. Sideboard, we've got a handful of counter spells. Sorceress Spyglass, that's for the primarily against Teferi decks. Then some additional removal. And then niv is kind of your control haymaker finisher. So anyways, this is the Is It deck. I'm super pumped. We're going to be playing it on the ladder today. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. And the deck is also kind of tricky, especially if you don't know, you know, if you haven't played with it a lot before. There's all of these little synergies, these little, there's lots of options each turn. All right, so we have two lands. This is a pretty straightforward keep, I think. Um, we have that Electromancer we can play early. We don't have an Arclight, which we would we would love. We don't know the matchup. Hopefully we're playing against decks a deck with creatures in it. Because we have a bunch of removal in this hand that we like to be able to use. Okay. So gutter bones. Lava coil is a a really nice answer to gutter bones there. And that's definitely not the type of trade we're looking to make, although it looked like our opponent does have that copy of lightning strike to take care of our electromancer. That's pretty unfortunate for us. This turn we can either chart or lava coil. I think I'm just gonna get this gutter bones off the board. So 
So I like the I like just opting to try to find our, another land. Don't really want that. Okay, unfortunate. Didn't get there. I think I'm going to make the same play. We just we desperately need more lands. We desperately need them. And I th even though this is good, we just need we need our land drop. Unfortunate that it's not not playing out the way I was hoping. We are fairly close to just being dead here. Not sure which of these we should actually take out. I'm gonna try for the, the artist. But any, uh, yeah, that is, that is, that does do it. So not a particularly, strong draw for on our part um we did see a number of lightning strike type cards and we we saw how easily it was for our opponent to get rid of our locked electromancer so that's the first card i'm thinking about cutting we want more high toughness creatures something like this murmuring mystic looks really nice cheap removal we saw those those little creatures that our opponent had. We're not really looking for something like a spell priest or a negate based off of those cards that we saw. Um, the one Ral seems fine. I'm not sure if we want additional copies of Ral. I could see Nimizit being good. If our opponent's relying on cards like Gutter Bones and One Toughness Creature. So I think I'm going to try one copy of Nimizit. And then I also kept in the one Melody. Maybe should have gone up to more Melodies, actually. I don't typically play against this, this particular deck. It's not... Rakdos Aggro is not one of the top tier strategies, I would say. So anyways, uh, this is like kind of the opposite, a very different style hand than what we had before. We have a lot of spells in our deck, uh, cantrip style cards. So I, I would love to draw something like a discovery, a radical idea, chart a course, tormenting voice, tormenting voice. So that was one of the cards I wanted to draw. Um, I am gonna use it and just pitch this arc light. Hopefully we'll be able to return it from that from our graveyard at some point. Hmm. Well I think we're radical idea. We're casting radical idea here, so we might as well do it now. So we actually have drawn both of our copies of Beacon Bolt. So we can start to use those on these creatures. Oh. Spawn of Mayhem. Well, that is problematic. I think we probably still have to take out the artist. We would, we would love a Lava Coil here. Um, but our opponent's really kind of giving us the business, so to speak. Um, Theater of Horrors is another annoying card. We have to shock here off the Steam Vents. We can play out a Crackling Drake. It's not quite large enough to actually eat the spawn yet, however. It's either that or just play out an arc light. 
on chump duty. Neither option seemed particularly great for us. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna play the arc light on chump duty. Not sure we can afford to be. Well, the problem is actually, is that the spawn of mayhem, which I was, does have trample. Um, so we're only chumping two points. I think maybe it's better in that case to block the foot life fiend if they are attacking with that. Um, we can hope. Once again, we're still hoping to be able to return our arc lights, but we need kind of a string of cards to be able to do that. I think I'll start with a radical idea here. And, hmm. Well, I'll radical idea again. Pitching pitching another arc light. Just hoping to draw one mana spell there. Um so we would have something additional to to play um, to get our arc lights back. Unfortunate there, I thought I think our our draws were not the best. I don't think that's like a terrible matchup for us either. I would expect to win more often than I would lose. Like game one, we had a bunch of lava coils and then saw no spawn of mayhems. And then game two, our opponent... Um, had these spawn of mayhems and we, we didn't have the lava coil. So it was just kind of one of those unfortunate circumstances here. We don't know what we're playing against. So I, I think I, I think we just want to put in this steam vents tapped rather than shock and potentially opt. And we do have, you know, a, a good turn to play. We've actually got some lands this time. So feeling more optimistic about our chances. Trancing Melody. So I think, well, we're gonna want a cantrip. Not in love with attacking into a potential Merfolk Trickster. It's not the worst trade, but it's also not a good trade. I think I'm gonna Radical Idea. Could, we could try to lava coil the storm tamer and just kind of see see what happens. First, I'm gonna opt. Okay. Well, we want that that arc light. It may actually be best to save the lava coil so that we can have it on a key turn. So I don't think I'm going to attack, once again, respecting the possibility of a Merfolk Trickster. If our opponent doesn't have it, we're, we're missing two damage there. Um, so nothing's really happening at the moment. I don't think I... I don't think we need to make our move right now. So I'm just gonna pass again. Uh, because we're not under any real pressure. All right. I think this is, go this is gonna be the turn where we want to, and I could have hard cast the Phoenix. I probably should have considered just playing Phoenix that last turn. So 
So we don't want to really entrancing melody because our opponent's fairly likely to have a dive down. I I can try to lava coil. I think I'm gonna try to lava coil the storm tamer and kind of just see see what happens. So we're gonna be able to get our Arclight back from our graveyard this turn. the merfolk trickster gotta wonder if our opponent's been kind of sandbagging that this whole time still not interested in trading off our electromancer just yet i value it a bit more than the trickster there Interesting situation once again we found ourselves in. I think I am going to attack this time. If our opponent has another trickster, they could use it to trade with the Electromancer. And we really want to just kind of get some of these creatures off the board. We know our opponent's likely to be holding some counter magic. I think it's a pretty easy choice to choose to pay here. For that spell pierce. Now they might have a second pierce. Um, Keep in mind, I could have played this land before doing this, but I was thinking we might want to discard it um, to a jump start. Well, what we can do here is simply Lava Coil away the Storm Tamer. So I think I'm just going to do that. And our opponents now used multiple spells on that. Multiple spell pierces are gone. So I think that, that exchange actually worked well for us, even though the beacon bolts eventually did get countered. We can now potentially set up a spot to entrance, Entrancing Melody. We're a little bit pinched on blue mana I think I'm gonna try to beacon bolt the terramander and just kind of see how that goes because the terramander is the creature on the board that can become really large so they're going for a wizard's retort I think now is the time to strike here. Our opponent's only got one card left. And we can try to go ahead and gain control of the Terramanter. Hopefully this works. Alright, that, that working is a great sign. Our opponent might just have... A land, it could be a trickster. Not too much else that I'm scared about. Okay. Curious Obsession. Well, so we can adapt the Terramander. Um, 
and I think I'm gonna opt first. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, our opponent would need to have a, a Merfolk Trickster here, I think, to survive. Okay, they do have it. So I'm guessing they tap the Terramander. Hmm. Well, we don't have to make a big attack here. We can play we can play this defensively and that's probably the best move. So this is where we get to kind of go through more of our deck. Draw a bunch more cards. Could shock the trickster now. But I don't think I will at the moment. I guess if I do it, they're probably going to attack with it. Um, don't, I think that's fine. Um, we can, oh, they're actually getting it with both. Wasn't expecting both to come in. We can set up potentially bringing our arc light back. So yeah, our opponent finally realized the writing was on the wall. And this is a matchup where the removal spells are really, really important. Um, definitely gonna board in that, that Shivan fire that you see there. The beacon bolts, generally like those. The expensive non-creature spells like Ral are pretty bad, especially knowing it, the opponent can have cards like Spell Pierce against you. Not as big of a fan as Tormenting Voice as some of the other cantrips, because if they do counter it, the discard is part of the cost, so sometimes that can be annoying. Um, Murmuring Mystic can be pretty good. If you get it if you get it down and start making those those birds and then Niv is it I mean Niv is it is a is a good top end good finisher so we want we do want the Niv is um, and the plan here is to just kind of play a longer game I am going to cut the melody. The melody was good in that game, but a lot of times it doesn't play out that way. Like the opponent will have, you know, a dive down or a storm tamer or a spell pierce. And you have to we're playing, we're relying on our Nim Mizzets with this current configuration as kind of our late, late game trump. So it looks like our opponent mul did mulligan. And we should probably do the same with that. This is fine. Yeah, we're pretty far away from Nim is it? Um, hmm. I think that's a bottom. 
the, the thing about Numizit is it's great if it if it makes it onto the battlefield against blue, but it is a six mana card, and sometimes they just have a pretty aggressive draw against you. We do have an Electromancer, so that is a really nice creature to have in play once again. Although it looks like it turboed out turboed out Tempest Jin. So we can potentially get an Arc Light onto the battlefield this turn. So we can chart a course and pitch it. Or we can radical idea to jumpstart to pitch it. Either way seems pretty good. I think I'm gonna chart. Oh wow. We actually found two phoenixes. Well, two is better than one. Uh, I'm not gonna attack into the the three four flyer there. Okay, deep freeze. So we could block and then try to recur this this phoenix, but I think I'm gonna take it take this one hit. Hmm. So we can go for the lava coil. See if they have the dive down. Okay, unfortunately they did have that dive down. I think I'm gonna block the uh, Tempest Gen and then try to shock it. We're not gonna be getting our Phoenix back next turn, but we will be able to get it back soon enough, I think. And here, Kind of want to just clear the board. We could also play a big Drake, a 5-4 Drake. Um, or we can just shock Terramander, Beacon Bolt, Tempest Gen. I think that's probably better. We may want to hold the shock until our opponent's turn in case of a Curious Obsession. Well, regardless, I am going to be attacking. I know that much. I mean, if we play the Drake, it, it it does just trade with the Jin, which isn't actually that bad for us. Um, I mean, all of the options are good in this spot. Um, I guess I'll, I guess I am gonna Drake. Having the extra card, the extra resource, and the fact that we have another Drake, and the fact that we we can get back a Phoenix. Wow, they're they're attacking with the Terramander also. I mean. I'll eat a Terramander, that's fine. To me, that's worth allowing the Jin to stick around for one more turn. And now we've just got, we've got the, wor the world, basically. Um, pretty much everything we could possibly want. Go ahead and kill some of this stuff. Get our arc light back and 
that is how you beat Mono Blue. Mono Blue really struggles with the amount of cheap cheap cards, and Goblin Electromancer is just so absurd if it comes down early. Like, Blue doesn't really have those cheap burn spells to get rid of an Electromancer in the same way as we saw in our first round of the set. Uh, three Crackling Dra Drakes. That's a lot, but I do think we should keep. Looks like a potential control matchup. Okay. I'm going to play this and just kind of see if it if our opponent has an answer for it. All right. Well, we made them use a cast down. We want to find our fourth land. Actually, we want both of those, I think. We're just gonna start playing Drakes for the foreseeable future, it seems. Maybe eat some Mortify or something, but it's, it's done its, its job. What we what we'd actually like? Oh yeah, we found a radical idea. Is that that's that's great because it allows us to pitch some of these cards we don't actually want in our hand. I'm gonna I'm gonna discovery first. Try to fill up the graveyard. So we can. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we opt now. Find a land. Can't actually pitch the Phoenix this turn, unfortunately. But it looks like our opponent's mana screwed pretty badly. And we've got a lot of good options, but Ral seems like the one that is the sweetest of them all. I love getting sweet planeswalkers onto the battlefield what would you risk in spots like this. Hope we get something good. So we can we can put the the Arclight into our graveyard, which is per perfect place for Arclight Phoenix, exactly where we want it in the, in our graveyard. So now we get to, I mean, we get to kind of go crazy here. Guess I'll start with Opt. We want to make sure that we put the second arc light into the graveyard. Played three spells. It's good enough to get these two arc lights into play. So we actually have to discard to hand size.
Ooh, Cry of the Carnarium. Okay, well that was pretty annoying. Hmm, decisions, decisions. However, we got to put another Arclight Phoenix into our graveyard. And we can try to get that back. We can also play a huge Crackling Drake. So I think no matter what we do, we're going to be in a pretty good spot. I'm going to chart. We're, we're pretty close to being able to kill our opponent with shocks, honestly. We, might be, we may be able to play both the Drake and get our Arclight back. Ooh. There's another shock. So I'm going to go face with that. Deal our opponent three here. And then next turn, if we are able to make the RAL emblem, the game just ends to the RAL emblem as well. So even though our opponent was able to cry of the Carnarium and permanently deal with two of our Phoenixes, We, we actually were just going to lethal our opponent um, if they didn't have this because we have the double the double shock already in hand. Um, but they gained some life there. That's okay. As I said, our backup plan was just deploying another Crackling Drake. It's That is lethal and the Rowl is essentially lethal, so... That was the game against Esper, game one, and now we get a bunch of tools after sideboard. Um, we get all of this counter magic, and we get our we get our planeswalker, additional Ral, and even the Nimizits. We Sorcerer's Spyglass is also reasonable um, here. So what we don't want is is our removal spells. Um, generally, our opponent's not going to have creatures against us. Now, we don't know that for sure. Um, like if we thought our opponent was going to have thieves or something, we would we would certainly keep some some removal in. Um, but generally speaking, I take it out, and then if if the opponent does have Creatures, we can always reevaluate for game three. Yeah, seems fine. We, we can pitch the arc light with this hand. We also drew into Electromancer. Our opponent is going to be incentivized to get rid of that. We'll see what they do, though, with the Thought Erasure. I could see arguments to taking any of the cards besides the Arclight Phoenix, but they are going to um, go with that Electromancer, and I don't, I don't blame them for making that choice. The Electromancer is really really strong Ooh. that's making me wish I had held up the gate I wasn't thinking about Kaya Kaya is brutal there that's really unfortunate I think I'll discovery Keep the opts. Normally these Esper decks only play one copy of Kaya, but when it's good, it's really, uh, really good. Funny, that's what I do.
All right, more ops. So we can just jam the Drake. Um, I think we should. There's a decent chance our opponent has a removal, but if they don't, super high upside. Okay, they have to ferry, but we have this arc light we can use to take out to ferry. So it's not all bad. It's not all bad here. So we're locked into to casting the arc light and taking out to ferry. Hopefully, we can untap in a reasonable spot here with the arc light still on the battlefield. Won't be happening though. So we know about that Drake though. We can dig for that Drake with the opt. I so I think we should do that. Already. Because if we can go, we can go crackling Drake, and then also have up negate. So I'm definitely gonna cast that that Drake here. And so we're not out of it. We really aren't. Have this negate we can use for that to ferry. The Drake is a pretty sizable threat now. Our opponent may be thinking about minus Kaya. Hmm. So we can just jam Ral. We should probably do that. First, I'm gonna. Actually, that was bad. I should have played Ral first before making that attack. My apologies. There's a chance we, we would mill a a card to make our Drake bigger here. Always nice to get out of the lab. Time to choose. Always so exciting. Yeah, I think so. We we could have dealt one extra damage to the Kaya. I'm going to pass holding up this gate. The question is, do we do we counter? Um, think so we can just we can just let this resolve and just I think we let this resolve like and just hold up this negate for the rail like to just protect our rail. And we have another Drake, so we can just play that. We don't need to, oh, wow. And we just drew, yeah, this game is looking excellent now. Hmm. And we have, wow, we, we also found a Spyglass we can use if we need to. I don't think we need to though. I'm just gonna play out and miss it. And pass with Negate up. So this seems worth fighting. Um, I think we just hit our opponent's face with the move triggers. Okay, that's fine. So let's see. Kaya's on four right now. <laughs> Usually I'm better at dodging. Lucky hit. We'll put Kaya down to two. And our opponent still needs to answer the the, the Rel, or else they're just gonna once again lose to the, the Rel. <laughs> Emblem. Hmm. Time. 
works. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff we can do. We can get the arc light back if we want to. And simply get rid of the Kaya that way. We can also play out. We could just play out the arc light. We don't even need to to go through the hoops. So I kind of like just Drake. Drake plus arc light. Gives us another huge creature on the board, and it allows us to take out the Kaya. And with six cards still in hand, our opponent realized they were very, very dead. I'm completing quests very easily, huh? Cast 30 white or blue spells. Well, we definitely cast a number of blue ones. So it looks like we're waiting a, a bit. I don't know what the holdup is. Um, hopefully our opponent shows up in a minute. But yeah, the control matchups like, if you win the first game like we did, that last round, um, it's pretty amazing. Because after board, you just get all these counters. You get to take out your lava coils. You get to take out your shocks which is what we did. And then we just had so much gas. Nimizit, negates, rouse, everything. So yeah, not sure what took our opponent so long there. Um, but here they are. It looks like they will be playing mono blue against us. So pretty easy keep. We have access to shock. I think I'm gonna, I wanna opt though. So I'm gonna, sh I am gonna sh play this untapped, this steam vents. That way we can opt end of turn. We still have the shock in hand. Um, the miscloaked herald isn't, it's fine, but it's not like the most annoying creature ever. So I guess our opponent, our opponent opted on their end step, which is a little odd to me. Um, especially since they missed that second land. They could have main phased that opt. Just gonna continue to draw, draw some cards. We probably want to try to take out the Terramander.
Yeah, I'm I probably should not have used the shock on my own turn. Although ooh. Yeah, definitely should not have used the shock on my own turn. But we can try to lava coil the uh, miscloaked herald. Or we could try to even entrancing melody it. Um, so, so we can play Electromancer and go for this melody, I guess. Wow. That's so many curious obsessions. Three curious obsessions. That's pretty absurd. Alright, well we drew we drew a second lava coil, so I'm gonna try to take out the miscloaked herald. And luckily that worked. Um haven't ha I have not played this game super well, I will say that. Just that one shock turn should have waited um until our opponent's turn to um to cast that. Wow, the fourth obsession? That's kind of absurd. Okay. So we're gonna try to take out this Terramander. I'm gonna start with an opt. We, we, we're generally looking for removal here. We actually drew all four copies of Radical Idea. Alright, so they're gonna... They're gonna dive down the Terramander. Okay. But well, we want a Lava Coil something. Probably just a Trickster here. because we may have to play some defense here and just go ahead and block the Terramander, block the Trickster. So those are actually forced blocks. So we take the one from the, the Herald. Um, hmm. Okay, so. What's the best way of doing this? I should probably Beacon Bolt to start, although. Hmm. So that, that would play around Spell Pierce. But if we draw into Shock or something, we would want to Shock this Herald. So maybe I should... Tormenting voice. See what we draw. Okay. Hmm. Electromancer is good. 
I'm inclined to, to want to keep that just because we have so many we have so many radical ideas. So we can we can take a hit here and go to one. Our opponents already used all of their curious obsessions this game. Well that's pretty bad for us, okay. Tempest Gin as well. Well we're gonna have to we're gonna have to take care of this stuff that our opponent has presented. Hmm. The question is, do we want to try to attack and chart or just chart before before attacks? We could still draw into an arc light, we did. So that's actually a blocker. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna chart now. We are hoping that that card our opponent has in hand is a blank. Oops, targeted the wrong one. That would that would be the biggest the biggest error of <laughs> Did not want to do that. Okay, they had they had the retort. Shoot. Alright, well I lost that game um due to I think a poor play on my part. So I apologize to all of you. The turn where I shocked on turn three was definitely, should not have, should, should have waited on that. That shock, I don't know, I'm trying to think why I did it there. Sometimes, sometimes people make plays where they're just kind of like spur of the moment decisions, um, but so anyways, we're in a we're in a sideboard essentially the same as when we played against Mono Blue the the previous round. And it looks like our opponent should probably, well, normally when I go into a matchup like this, I'm gonna have a better idea of how to sideboard. It looks like our opponent is really taking their time. And sometimes that can be frustrating. Like I think going into the round, I lost a little bit of focus because our opponent showed up late essentially. But here we are. On the play, pretty good matchup. Fortunately, we have to maul that. This is fine, we want our third land. And we're off, we can, we can play a turn two Electromancer, which is exactly what we want as our turn two play, even though we did, we did mulligan, but hopefully the chart can kind of get us back some of these cards we've lost. So I'm gonna get in there. I think there is a decision to be made here of whether to shock to play around Spell Pierce. 
but I'm just gonna chart. Luckily, it worked out. Don't think we want a lava coil in case our opponent plays a tempest gin on their turn. So I'm gonna pass. We can I radical idea, and then curve that into our drakes. So I'm going to attack here. Um, if our opponent plays a trickster and blocks, that means that they are allowing a crackling drake to resolve. Probably gets wizards retorted, but we'll see. All right. There's, there's the gin. Figured that one might come down so soon, although we have double lava coil, so we can, we can take it out here if we want to, which I think is the plan. I'll, the other option is just play a drake. Um, it's not huge just yet, but it, it will be. It will get quite large, the Crackling Drake there. So it's it's an interesting decision. It also blocks the two one ones. Yeah, I like that. So the Storm Tamer could counter one of the Lava Coils. Um, now we have, we've just drawn into Shock, so we can use that on the Siren Storm Tamer. We can take a, a five ball from the the gym. That's fine. Well, all right. Lots of tempest gins. So we're gonna try to deal with them with these lava coils. We're gonna op, so I might as well do that now. Okay, beacon bolt, that's good. All right, so we got rid of all of those gins, which is really nice. Our opponent if they drew a land, they could adapt the Terramander, but we now have access to this Beacon Bolt as another piece of removal. So I'm not super scared here. We could block the Trickster. I don't think it's correct though. I value the Electromancer pretty highly, even later in later stages of the game like this one being able to make all of these spells a bit cheaper is really nice. I'm going to I'm going to go for this beacon bolt. All right, that did work. Perfect. So now we we can just try to kill our opponent with this crackling drake. So this time, I think I'll wait. I've learned my lesson there about main phasing burn spells. So I'm going to wait on this Shivan Fire. Now that our opponent's attacking, I think I will use it. Um, not really a big deal if it, this doesn't work out. They need to essentially have an answer to the, the Crackling Drake here. which would be something like a Merfolk Trickster. So 
So yeah, I'm just gonna go to combat, see if they play one. They did not, so I, oh, you know what? Actually, they they can make the, the Drake into an 0-4 creature. That is, that is a thing that they can do. Um, still not really worried about it too much. Don't think I'm gonna lava coil. Our opponent would have to have like two obsessions there, but even then we could still block the trickster, so yeah. All right, game three. Game three. I think last time I I did board in the, uh, the Murmuring Mystic. So the mono blue deck is very tricky to play against. I think that last game we navigated it well. The turn two Electromancer was really, really big for us. Um, and as you saw in the in the first game, I, I think I punted it, honestly. We probably should have already won the match. Um, mis missequencing my removal. So... You want to try to prevent them from snowballing Curious Obsessions because that's how the mono blue deck gets ahead on cards. That's the easiest way for them to win. Um, I should have, yeah. So definitely, I'm talking to you all and I'm also talking to myself. Don't don't make that same, uh, you know, prevent the obsession coming down. That's that's the goal. Now sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes they they play the one drop on turn one and then they have the obsession with the the backup for everything that you've got. Other times, you have to make sure to use the removal at the right time on the right creatures. All right, so this is a frustrating hand that I think we have to mulligan, um, but would have loved to keep it. If we had had one more land, or maybe even an opt. All right, well, this this we do keep. I think Radical Idea stays on top. It's not the best hand I've ever seen, but it'll do. Luckily, our opponent does not have a, a one-drop creature. So that's potentially good news. Likely means that they've... They've got counters and maybe like a Tempest Gin or a Trickster or something like that. Now there's the Storm Team. All right. So we want Discovery. Yeah, I think so. We're just kind of cantripping. I'm gonna cast it. I don't think we need another land, but the, the drake should stay. Yep, there it is. So, we knew that the obsession might be coming there. Not surprised to see it. We have the shock, so I'm going to jam the shock. Actually, what I should do is jam the lava coil, I think. Uh, that way, if our opponent has the, if, if our opponent has a dive down, we can then respond to that with shock. So I think I should definitely lava coil. And also if they have spell, yeah, so that, this, this was exactly what we wanted. So 
Lava Coil, get them to use their dive down, and then as an instant we can shock, get rid of the Storm Tamer, get that obsession creature completely off the board, and now try to get this Drake onto the battlefield. See if they have an essence capture. They do. They do have essence capture. Sometimes people will, will side them out in this matchup, but that was good there. Don't. I doubt our opponent has one for this, for the second Drake. Hmm. I think I. I think having drawn the Shivan Fire, I kind of want to just use it. Um, to stop a potential obsession coming down on this next turn. Ooh, that that was a really nice draw. We'll be casting that Murmuring Mystic for sure. And that was it. Okay, all right. Got it done. Quest complete. Alright, pretty easy keep. We've got Electromancer on turn two. Exactly what we're looking for. So our opponent's on red, um, which means that the Electromancers are less likely to actually stick, but we're still casting them, making our opponent use their burn on, on our creatures. I'm going to get rid of that Lava Runner, though. Um, Gitu Lava Runner just to, can be a pretty significant clock if we don't answer it. So, the chart. We really just wanna kinda churn through our deck. I don't think I wanna shock though against red. So I'm just gonna put the steam vents into play tapped. We're hoping they don't have, forgot to say any more creature threats, but they do. Luckily we, we found we found a nice chunk of removal now. Um, so I think we just take the beacon bolt. And then bolt this. So we're looking now for a Crackling Drake or an Arc Light. Crackling Drake is great against these types of decks. Okay, I think I'll, I think I'll take another Electromancer. I'm just gonna chart, continue digging through our deck. We can Beacon Bolt the Pyromancer if we feel the need to do so. We could also just block. I don't mind blocking because it prevents light up the, it prevents the spectacle from cards like light up the stage. Ooh. Well, that seems like an easy choice. I'm gonna play Rao. Mm, decisions, decisions. Definitely put the the arc light in our graveyard. 
Could be a Chain Whirler this turn now that they have three lands. Yep. And that's perfectly fine. We are now quite far ahead, I would say. These are actually both good, I think. Maybe we just take the lava coil, but... So we can coil this. I guess we just take the shock upstairs or we... Yeah. Not surprised to see our opponent just go ahead and and scoop that up. So we're going to board in the Shivan Fire. We want, we really want to be able to kill like the Gitu Lava Runners, the Runaway Steamkins, that type of thing. Murmuring Mystic is good. Entrancing Melody can be, can be another useful card in the matchup. Depends on how the games go. Rao, Rao was good that, that game. So it's not always, not always going to be like that, however. I'm just going to cut some of the cantrips. I think we, we just, it's a creature deck. Beacon Bolt is just good against creature decks. And Entrancing Melody is also a card that I, I'm fairly interested in here. The Ral, yeah, the Ral's are the ones that I've kind of gone back and forth on. But they can be just a, a tad slow, especially being on the draw this game, which we are on the draw. So I'm just gonna go with a, a removal heavy build on the draw and this type of this type of matchup is pretty good for us overall. Oh, you know, you know what? Another card that sometimes I do take out though, which I rarely take out, but Goblin Goblin Electromancer is a card that I sometimes will also consider sideboarding out. So we mulligan another really bad seven. This this hand is also bad, but I'm gonna try it keep the Shivan Fire on top because we need, as I mentioned earlier, um, we need removal for those early creatures. So we'd like something like a, like a Radical Idea or a Chart, of course. I think I will play the Sulfur Falls. In case our opponent plays a one mana creature, we might want to Melody this turn. Unfortunately, Chain Whirler is the best creature against Melody because it it's the most takes the, the most mana investment in the red deck to actually take it. Five mana can be quite pricey. Okay, well the steam can we can grab, and our opponent also has a map. Map is map is pretty decent. So we're we're clearly we're cl clearly behind in the game. We could melody right now. I think I'm gonna Drake. However, this also allows our opponent to put some counters on the Steamkin, which. Like, we can still take it. Or we can take the Chain Whirler. I am going to block with the Drake, I think. And it there's a reasonable chance that it's going to 
Alright, well, it, it just died to a lava coil anyways. Yeah, this, this is where things get pretty rough. Wasn't expecting our opponent to chain all of that stuff there. So we can Beacon Bolt, but we only have one spell in the graveyard. So the, I guess... I guess I can Beacon Bolt. Be beacon Bolting this Steamkin seems better than, um, than Melodying, because our opponent can take, can make this a 1-1 one -one in response to the Melody. <clears throat> um, both options, not, not particularly good. I will say that. Well, we know how our opponent sideboarded against us, so that is the good news. Don't think there's any way here. Now, the question is, do we want the Electromancers? Because sometimes we see that they board out a lot of their removal. Like game one, they're not that good, but games two and three, they can be better. Um, I should have probably discussed them a, a bit more. Also, spell pier spell pierce can be good if they're on the like the treasure map plan. Um, pierce is reasonable. Spyglass is reasonable against the maps. I guess since we know since we know about the maps, I am going to board a, a little bit differently. I'm going to take out the goblin electromancers. Which I think is generally something that a lot of players will, will tend to do in this matchup. Niv Mizzet and, and Ral are both fine top end plays. I can see, I can see going to either one of them. But I, I think I like Niv a bit more of those two options. And with the with the Electromancers out of our deck, we we can start looking at shaving actually an Arclight Phoenix, I think. Because we're not really as co combo based anymore as we were in in game one. And then Niv once you get Niv Mizzet down. Like, we know that our opponent has boarded in these lava coils, they boarded in treasure maps, so they're trying to go bigger, which means games can go longer. Ooh, this is frustrating. Frustrating hand. Can't keep it. Having to mulligan a decent amount, but we need, we need to be able to, you know, make sure we have plays we can make, things we can do in the first couple turns. Now, Sulfur Falls as our third land, I I think we also wanna, you know, three, three or four, four lands is about the point where I'm like, okay, not sure I want lands anymore, but that one seems fine. I'm gonna radical idea. The thing, the thing about taking out the electromancers is you do have to play pay full full price on cards like radical idea. Ooh, 
I wish that spell pierce was in our was in our hand when our opponent played that map. I think I'm gonna hold the opt for a potential arc light phoenix recursion turn. Hopefully, hopefully our opponent gives us something we want to spell pierce here. Maybe like a light up the stage type card. All right. Spell Pierce got some value. So I'm just gonna run out, my plan is to run out the arc light now. We can jump, we can discard the other one to the radical idea, but this one I'm just gonna hold back Play it as a blocker, and ho hopefully it doesn't get lava coiled. If it gets hit with like a shock or a wizard's lightning, um, that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, cinder, cinder vines is is kind of a substantial problem for our deck. Um, we've got a lot of a lot of non-creature spells that we are kind of heavily reliant on. So for our opponent to dump a Cinder Baron, Baron, Barons into play is not good news and it also means we'll probably have to try to race our opponent. I'm gonna go ahead and Discovery now. Okay, Entrancing Melody and Chart of Course. Well, the melody seems good. I think I think I'll keep them both. Question is, do we melody? I think we do melody this turn. We can bring back the arc light next turn and taking one of these lava runners is pretty nice. Cuz it also means that that that's one less you know, attacker on our opponent's side of the board. And in our case, it's going to come into play with haste. So they may have, you know, a removal spell or something, but the plan is to just kind of out, out race, out gun the Cinder Vines. Even though it's going to be good, it's going to deal us a big chunk of damage. Wow, okay, well, now I'm kind of regretting this, keeping this chart of course on top of our deck, but what what I can do is just hard cast an arc light. We don't even need to, we don't, we don't actually need to start cantripping and stuff. We just play arc light, bash for, bash for six. And force our opponent to come up with something. Really, they they need to immediately draw something here to answer these these arc light phoenixes. But yeah. Now with the second Cinderbinds, I'm wishing I had not topped the the chart. All right, so we're taking four, but we can crack back for six. Well, let's see. Let's see what this light of the stage does. Hopefully, nothing too bad for us. Lightning strike. Lightning strike can take out a phoenix. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure about this. Not sure. Hmm. Yeah, the issue is that if we start casting things, we are close to just killing ourselves. Hmm. 
I guess I guess I'm gonna attack because I don't really see you know another option. We can try to opt into something like a, a crackling drake would be good to opt into. So this, our opponent felt the need to go ahead and lightning strike our arc light there. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna opt. Take a bunch of damage. From Cinder Vines. Don't think Lava Coil is gonna cut it. Yeah, we are just dead. Cinder Vines. Cinder Vines can be real annoying. Spots like that. Alright, I'm gonna play, um play one more match for you all with the is it arc light deck that was yeah we we saw we saw the, the problems post board game one it's just super straightforward i think we're we're pretty nicely favored in game one of that matchup Alright, this hand is quite nice. Looks like we're playing against a red variant again. So, I'm gonna hold up the shock, I think. And if our opponent plays a runaway steamkin, or basically any, any other creature there, I would have gotten rid of it. But since it's the fanaticals, I'll shock a fanatical. They're not the scariest in the world, but that's fine. So I can just play this goblin. I think I will. Uh, it forces our opponent to have a burn spell to deal with it. Normally they do, admittedly. So let's, we're digging for drakes and arc lights primarily. Lava Coil, I don't think we, we want it. It's only okay in spots like this. So now we want, since we naturally drew a Arc Light, we're gonna want to find a way to actually, to get it into our graveyard. Yep, Dra Drake is one of the best cards here. It's, four, four toughness is, huge against red it basically means that they have to two for one themselves to get rid of it and we're drawing a card off off of it so it's more like a three for one so we don't know if this version is the splash green version that we played against the previous round that was fairly annoying um different red players are going to sideboard a bit differently but yeah, I should be, I think I should be taking out the Electromancers in general. And also some of the, the two mana cantrip stuff with like Radical Idea gets worse once you no longer have the Electromancers. And then Nimizit, it can be Good, but I, we don't know how our opponent's sideboarding, so I think I'm just gonna stick with this for for game two. And then if, if we see the Gruel cards like the the Cinder Vines, we'll have to reevaluate. But I have, I have a feeling our opponent's just playing mono red, and I think we can just get the job done with Arc Lights and. Cracklings and and entrancing melody. Entrancing melody can be pretty nice. No one drop is good news. We can just kill 
a Pyromancer or a Steamkin, presumably. Oh, they are playing the Gruel variant. Never mind. They're playing the, that. They're playing the Gruel variant, but they did not have the card that we were scared of, which was the Cinder Vines. So I can just Beacon Bolt this Pyromancer. And I, I did I did just leave in the one row, which I like, but it is kind of weird to just have one when you have access to two after board. Okay, so they're gonna they're gonna take away our shock, or no, they're gonna take away our um, beacon bolt. Okay, that that makes more sense. Well. I think we just want to play a Crackling Drake. If our opponent attacks into it, I'm not going to block it. But they just had Lava Coil. Yeah, Lava Coil. It's a card. Ooh, that was, that's another sweet, sweet Cyborg card. Or murmuring Mystic, so we can either we could play Mystic, we could play Ral, we could we could try to get Phoenix back with a tormenting voice turn. I think I'm gonna play Ral. This turn is not I perfected the perfect storm. Great for us. Um, so we're just kind of hoping that our opponent doesn't like do anything too too bad and then if we're able to untap either if they use resources on Ral, great. Looks like they're going face though. Okay. Frenzy is a problem. Vision time. I think we're just taking this basic mountain. Oh no. The auto tapper. What did they do to me? They didn't tap the basic there. All right. Um, well, guess all tormenting boys. I wanted to hold up double shock, but. I did not tap correctly, I guess. So we can just win with this Drake. Even though our opponent has Frenzy going, I think we are, especially since they did nothing essentially that turn, and we've got this Ral ticking up to it. A very high amount of loyalty, eight. I think we are favored in, in, in this spot. The question is what the what the best way to go about this is. Because we do have that arc light in the graveyard, but I think I'm going to play out the... Hmm. We can also melody... Melody plus shock. That's That is reasonable. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the melody line. So I'm gonna melody the melody. Take the the dire fleet daredevil. Shock the pyromancer. And what a radical idea. So we've assembled, let's see, a reasonable amount of power. Oh, well, that's that's just game. Okay. I was about to say we get to minus eight the rail. That's pretty insane. All right. Well, I think we uh, we certainly won more than we lost, and 
this deck is really good. It's really good. It's it's impressed me. Um, this is an arc like deck. It's been around for a little while, as I said. There's no signs of it stopping. So, yeah, pick this deck up if you haven't already tried it. And.